webinar. We're going to wait a few more minutes for more people to roll in and then we will start shortly. Thank you for your patience. Hello, everyone, and thank you for attending today's webinar, Cyber Risk, Financial Impacts, and Security Operations Value. Our speakers today will be Lewis Evans and Ben Bitterman. Before we begin, I want to cover a few housekeeping items. At the bottom of your audience console are multiple application widgets you can use. If you have any questions during the webinar, you can submit them in the Q&A box, and they will be answered at the end of the presentation. You can also expand your, side, your slide area by clicking on Maximize icon on the top right of the slide viewer. If you have any technical difficulties, please click on the Help widget. And if you can please take a moment to fill out the survey at the end of the webinar, that would be very helpful. And with that, I will pass it off to Lewis Evans to kickstart today's presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, and thanks to everyone at Insight for uh, organizing this event and bringing us together today. I'm Lewis Evans. I'm a senior PMM here at Arctic Wolf. I've been doing a lot of work over the past year or two to help understand and quantify the value of security operations. And I'm very excited to be joined by my colleague, Ben Bitterman, who's a VP of sales. Ben, you wanna talk a little bit about your role here at Arctic Wolf? Yeah, absolutely. So I lead half of our acquisition sales organization and spend a majority of our time helping build valuable business cases to, to help our customers really adopt uh, stronger practices for cybersecurity and ultimately reduce their, their risk. So today we've got a lot to go through. We're gonna start by talking about market drivers in cybersecurity and the effectiveness gap. Uh, then we'll discuss the security operations approach, and then we'll take a look at uh, qual quantifying the value of the security operations advantage. And uh, Ben, you know, I, you, you mentioned business cases. I know you've spent a lot of time talking with organizations that are trying to understand uh, maybe why they're not achieving uh, what they wanted to with their uh, cybersecurity investments and their approaches. Um, so I'll hand it right off to you for market drivers. That's perfect, Lewis. Thank you. I think it's, it is really good to reflect on what some of the key market challenges are uh, for our customers, why they engage in talking to us. And I think interestingly enough, in the last 18 to 24 months, a big driver for many organizations have been changes in the, uh, the insurance industry, particularly around cyber insurance. Um, I think this is partially due in part because of several years ago, um, global conflict increase, and just the uh, overall uh, effectiveness gap in security, which we'll talk about later, um, there's been a lot of payouts in regard to breaches and incidents that happen, which uh, are creating a negative effect and kind of waterfall effect on the insurance market, which is creating uh, increased premiums, reduced coverage, uh, overall specific carve outs in regards to um, cyber and ransomware, um, and, and ultimately forcing the market to adopt tighter controls uh, to really impact how and who they're doing business with for under, the underwriting process and writing policy. So there, there really has been a change to a new approach to validating security uh, and in order to maintain the, 
the coverage and the risk coverage that, that companies are looking for. Um, it's no surprise that compliance driven industries have, have generally been larger investors uh, in cybersecurity and, and tend to be a bit more mature in what they're doing overall operationally because uh, they're required to either from government legislation, uh, from regulatory agencies that are spending time um, actually assessing how they map to particular compliance frameworks. Uh, and, and if you're not meeting those requirements in a regulated industry, um, you're, you're generally not around for very long or you're paying heavy penalties or fines. Uh, but one new dynamic has emerged, I think, recently as well, where there's, um, there's a whole new layer of pressure around compliance, and it's really coming from um, customers, and it's, it's, it's really impacting all commercial industries, um, and, and even public industries for that matter. And th that's because of um, the pressure of all industries are under in regards to compliance is trickling down through vendor risk management and overall supply chain attack risk and, and compliance. And so you're starting to see large uh, commercial businesses invest in risk and governance teams in their own tools and processes um, for actually auditing their customers and making sure that um, they are not uh, in, in, uh, in a targeted lens for, for doing business with the vendors and, and, and the, the partnerships that, that they choose. Um, and, and when you think about um, right now in the current mar market dynamics, uh, value is everything. Value for dollars is how everyone is assessing their business. Uh, can you be more efficient? Uh, can you save money? And how, how do we really better what we're doing while really keeping a, a, a core mission or goal on overall effectiveness? And I think that's created a problem uh, for security practitioners and IT leads because the old approach, it, it created a lot of noise, right? You invest in tools, you have to manage those tools. You have to have time put into those. You have to develop your own processes. If you choose in partnerships to invest in, are you assessing them thoroughly enough to quantify or validate how you are, are getting the value you're looking for out of those service? And, and ultimately, are you getting the value uh, that you really thought you were getting when you, when you started on that, that journey of making those investments? And I think um, those are really three big problems that when you look at um, how the insurance industry is actually setting premiums right now, they all kind of coincide with where are you on your journey around security maturity, right? Um, there's some things companies can control over their risk pro profile and there's some that, that they don't or can't, or at least um, I guess it, it contradicts overall goals. As a company, you wanna grow your company, you wanna grow your revenue, you wanna um, succeed in the industry. Uh, and if you're, if you're operating in, in one that uh, deals with any customer confidential in information, there's sensitivity there, right? And, and generally when you're growing, you're adding more employees. So all of those things, right, increase your risk. Um, but the one that cyber insurers are really putting a lens on now more than ever is um, can, can they impact how organizations are actually thinking, influencing and investing in their, their maturity? Um, and when you pair the profile of your organization multiply that by what your likelihood is of having a cyber attack. And there's all kinds of industry statistics and averages around um, ransomware, debt, data extortion, uh, and, and business email compromise or fraud transfers, right? Um, but depending on the size of your business and, and the volume of data you have, the impacts are different as well. And so you have to pair all three of those elements when you get your overall risk profile and that concept of cyber risk is really what, really what is being looked at right now in, in the market. And I think um, adopting a framework or adopting a vision, a roadmap to how you are going to prove not only to in the insurance industry, but to your customers um, and to auditing bodies if you're under compliance on how you are taking steps towards advancing your security um, is really what people want to see in today's day and age. And so if you haven't thought through which framework you're going to utilize, I highly encourage it. We'll talk about that a little bit more later, but 
but I wanted to bring attention to the fact that there, there's an overall effectiveness gap in the market. And what I mean by that is um, there's been a lot of investment in cybersecurity in the last two decades, call it, right? And um, you know, just last year, there was over $160 billion in money spent in, in cybersecurity um, in over you know, 3,000 plus vendors, yet the rate of losses and the volume of attacks is still increasing. And it's, it's beginning to increase at an even more exponential rate than investment, right? And that creates an overall just market dynamic where, where there is a lack of effectiveness. And that, that brings me um, to back to figuring out the methodology that helps you build effective practices on a, a journey or on a roadmap uh, to really develop and advance your posture over time. And we believe that it really requires investment in security operations and the security operations approach to advancing your, your cybersecurity. Lewis, I will hand things over to you to talk about um, what security operations really means and, and the lens in which we view it. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Ben, and thanks for for summarizing those problems. So, what we've been seeing is is driven by those problems. Uh, people are looking to uh, make a change in how they pursue cybersecurity, and that change is not just the result of uh, you know a, a new technology or a new particular solution. Of course, that space is continuing to evolve, but we're also seeing a transformation in mindset. We're seeing uh, security conscious organizations trying to starting to move from a tools mindset toward an operational mindset. Uh, and we think of an operational mindset as containing uh, or, or uh, an operational mindset as, as representing sort of three uh, concrete um, concepts. The first is a commitment to unifying the security tech stack. Every organization that we work with, every organization that we know has some security tech stack, has some security investments in the past. And often what we see is those investments were thoughtfully made, but not necessarily effectively implemented and certainly not integrated into an ongoing security operations practice. Um, by optimizing the existing tech stack, it's possible to gain visibility across attack surfaces and types. The next uh, sort of change in, in, uh, in outlook or perspective is, is moving to a focus on outcomes. So oftentimes we see uh, a security program that's oriented toward uh, particular security practices or activities. We're going to have the right code that stops this set of malicious software. We're going to uh, scan for every vulnerability with a CVE score or a vulnerability score of you know whatever amount, um, and we'll uh, you know and, and and we'll go in and we'll patch that. Um, and and what we can see is that in in this sort of legacy mindset, often a lot of those practices end up disconnected from outcomes rather than uh, understanding the connection between a particular security activity and the outcome, which is the ability to disrupt the kind of attack that we actually expect and, and mitigate cyber risk. And that ultimately feeds into uh, everything Ben was talking about in the prior section, which is that you know what matters is the risk that you can quantify and, and the exposure that you're, you're presenting. Um, and so with us, this focus on outcomes, it then becomes possible, or sorry, with the unification of the existing security tech stack, and a focus on outcomes, it then becomes possible to work on building resilience, building a comprehensive uh, program that provides a 24 by seven security posture um, and that aligns uh, dedicated expertise and a tailored security program to a business's specific needs. And, you know, and then we find that instead of uh, security being a space where we're you know, chasing after an exploding universe of vendors and best practices and cool things we heard about, um, you know, we're instead uh, focused and dedicated on delivering the outcomes that are going to change the risk for the business, uh, delivering that value, and that we're going to be able to do so in an efficient and an effective fashion, which is going to, again, uh, you know, sort of maximize the value of those investments. So what's included in the operational approach? What do we need? Well, you know, like I said, there's a, there's a bunch of security investments. There's a sort of a, an evolving world of security technologies. Um, but what we need are the uh, kind of practices and the kind of capabilities that are going to allow us to unify those investments and those cap those uh, pr those technologies um, to deliver the outcomes that we're looking for. So the first one is broad visibility, um, and that's a, that has both a, a technical and an operational component. We need to have instrumentation 
whether that's existing tools in our security stack or a lot of times the logs natively generated by our IT solutions or occasionally uh, new instrumentation put in by uh, you know, a security operations vendor or partner. Um, but what we really need is, so <laughs> that was sort of a lot of different options there. What we really need is for that visibility to be delivered across our environment. Um, we need to be able to see everything that's happening. And it's, and it's important to uh, have that broad visibility because attackers are looking to attack us where we can't spot them. Um, it's never, you know, you can, it, it, a pretty general law of security is that often it's more important to bring up your weakest point because attackers are looking to exploit that than it is to reinforce your strongest point, which often they're gonna look to bypass anyway. One of the, the key areas that gets neglected is visibility, so that comprehensive visibility is important. Um, 24 by seven coverage is uh, the same principle applied to the time dimension. Uh, we see a lot of uh, organizations that have made considerable investments in security and even in security practitioners, um, but are not actually providing continuous monitoring and visibility into their environments. And attackers know that, you know, there's a, uh, <laughs> there's sort of an interesting academic question whether so many attacks occur at night because they're often uh, coming from geos with uh, on you know in another time zone, uh, or because attackers are deliberately exploiting the fact that if they move in uh, at night, or if they move in during a known uh, holiday period, or or what have you, that they can bypass or or evade notice by security practitioners. But whatever the reason is, uh, it's absolutely the case. And and so broad visibility means broad visibility through time, and it means access to expertise. Um, another thing that we see a lot of is that security responsibilities are often folded into IT, and that means that or, um, you know, individual IT practitioners are, are given an extra security hat and told to put that on. And they're working hard, and they're, uh, you know, they're doing a lot of work to deliver security outcomes, but they don't necessarily have the context to keep abreast of the evolving attack space, to understand uh, which indicators of compromise are aligned with the worst, you know, the most uh, serious attacks and the most serious risks. Uh, to understand what kind of um, uh, practices or, or reconfigurations or changes can help defend the business. Um, they're unable to effectively triage these alerts, and that means that they're unable to effectively respond to them. And they lack strategic guidance. Um, so an organization that, that has an IT team with uh, limited security expertise, or maybe the security expertise is being sort of fully consumed uh, simply by day-to-day -day security activities. You know, we, we we generate X volume of alerts and we hired people who can triage exactly X alerts. Like that sounds like a, a program um, that is uh, stabilized, that's been fully resourced. Um, already that's that's a better position than, than many organizations are in. Uh, but if you're in that position and you're, you don't have access to strategic guidance and you don't have uh, hours and time and, and resources to deliver strategic guidance, then you know, you're fully resourced, you're staying still. Uh, the attackers are not staying still. You need that strategic guidance, and you need that strategic guidance to deliver continuous improvement in the security operations program. So the way that we do that uh, at Arctic Wolf, you know, this is our, our bread and butter, um, is we work through something we call the security operations cloud. So the first thing we do is we go into an environment um, and we identify the vast universe of security relevant data sources that are already present. And that might, would include the endpoint, the network, cloud, identity resources, uh, and, and humans as well, an important, uh, important component of the security landscape. And, and in each of these cases, we're looking for data that's coming both from security tooling that might already be implemented in the space, and also data and intelligence that's being generated by each of these capabilities natively. Um, that's a, that's a, there's sort of two common mistakes that we make. One is we assume, oh, well, all the security data is being generated by security tools. We don't really need to go in and instrument uh, existing systems. Um, that's something you sort of commonly hear around uh, networks, maybe the biggest one where people are like, well, unless I have a, you know, a specific network security tool in place, I don't, I don't really need to look at that. Um, no, that's, you know, certainly we want to collect security relevant data, even from non-security. And at the same time, uh, when there's a native security capability um, without without integrating it, without acting on it, it's gonna be a lot less effective. And that's you know sort of a common story you hear with, with cloud in particular. A lot of cloud vendors uh, advertise their native security capabilities, they're right to do so. These capabilities exist and they're, they're meaningful and they're effective, but without being integrated, uh, oftentimes they're not actually delivering that security outcome. 
So we're identifying all that data, we're ingesting that data, and we're bringing it into the Arctic Wolf platform, which is a cloud-based environment um, where we're able to collect, uh, integrate, and analyze all that data. Uh, we're using our Arctic Wolf labs uh, to perform cutting edge security industry research to help understand the evolving threat models and, and contextualize and interpret the data. Um, and then uh, for individual customers, we're aligning the data that we've collected with uh, through the concierge delivery model where dedicated security operations engineers uh, are aligned to specific customers to understand their business problems and uh, deliver particular security outcomes. And we deliver those outcomes through a few key solutions. So the first one here is managed detection response. That's a solution where our concierge security teams are going in, uh, identifying indicators of compromise, risks and incidents as they're occurring, uh, and helping respond to them, which is a key capability that we have. Um, we have managed risk where we're delivering the same sort of uh, operational support for the practice of uh, understanding the universe of vulnerabilities and engaging in a continuous patching and hardening process to promote uh, a better security posture. We have a, a managed security awareness solution where we're, again, we're bringing the same comprehensive visibility of the same concierge delivery model to the problem of building a culture of uh, continuous awareness and cybersecurity within the organization, taking security awareness from uh, a checkbox that doesn't really change the behavior of teams and employees uh, into a practice that can that can turn uh, the workforce, the team of the organization, uh, from a security risk to a security asset. And uh, we have incident response capabilities where we've brought in dedicated teams of responders in the event that there is a serious incident, we're going to be able to uh, rapidly respond and contain this. And that's a, a big component of the risk that we looked at. Um, you know, the, the risk is that combination of likelihood and impact. Uh, these first three solutions are all doing their part to uh, reduce the likelihood or contain the impact. But even in the event of a serious incident, we're going to be able to dramatically reduce the impact by responding in a disciplined, efficient, and prepared way. Each of these solutions is taking uh, our customers along what we call the security journey, right? So our mission at Arctic Wolf is to end cyber risk. And that's not something that happens overnight. That's something that happens uh, through a continuous process of ongoing improvement. Um, security is not a outcome or a destination that happens when you, you, know, you install the Arctic Wolf box and you flip a switch. It's a, a journey to continuously enhancing uh, a business's posture such that you're always staying ahead of adversaries who are looking to exploit it. Our concierge security team takes this long-term approach and guides the customers uh, to adopting the cybersecurity framework in a custom way that prioritizes high impact work, but that's also aligned with the customer's unique business context. Ben talked a little bit about the evolving world of uh, regulations um, and the evolving world of you know, regulations that are driven by customers and other business relationships. And, and part of what that expresses is the evolving understanding that each business represents a unique uh, portfolio of cyber risk. And so, the relationship that our concierge security teams are developing with their customers and the guidance that they're providing that's, spe uh, that's specialized or specific to those customers' business challenges and, and cyber risks is going to be really transformative in letting them achieve a more secure posture compared to simply attempting to sort of run through a NIST checklist. And finally, of course, we're tracking progress across these activities. Customers have a clearer understanding of their security posture, their level of maturity, their overall resilience, what they've done to improve that maturity, which can be a really important uh, component for security practitioners making the case to other stakeholders and to leadership, uh, and what they're going to do next. Um, you know, it's, it takes security from a, from a uh, no disrespect to anyone currently in this, this position, but takes security from uh, a practice that can sometimes be sort of stumbling from uh, you know, one investment to another investment, one hot tool to the next hot tool, to a continuous discipline of improvement um, that's every day is making the business safer. So the security journey um, involves a series of customization focuses, uh, steady state security posture in-depth reviews, which are consultative engagements with our team, uh, detour uh, spiders, so specific uh, consultative engagements that are aligned to particular business problems, and ad hoc activities all of which are aligned to drive the security posture upward um, 
through both a, a program that we've helped define uh, through specific subcases that we've helped understand based on our business experience with, with other organizations in similar positions, and by responding to particular uh, events that occur in the security space or particular challenges that our customers are facing. <laughs> and we got a bunch of checks pop up in that one. Uh, and with that, uh, Ben, I'd, I'd love to hand it back to you to talk a little bit about the value that our customers are able to see with this, uh, with this approach. Yeah, thank you, Lewis, for very articulately describing kind of the, the approach that the platform, the value of our team and the, the, the solutions we provide uh, can, can offer. Um, they mean nothing though, if the business doesn't see value in them. And um, when you think about security operations value, um, it starts with quantifying what broad visibility actually brings to the organization. Uh, and it's really important to point out that um, if you're investing in security, you want to be investing in looking at everything, but you want to choose a partnership or a tool set um, or services overall that help you accomplish that broad visibility dynamic. Because if you can't see it, you can't protect it, you can't get the answers you need in uh, a, a, a time of high stress. And that is ultimately the outcome that that our customers look for is when, when something bad happens, uh, post boom, they want to know the who, what, why, where, when, how, and what do we need to do and how are you helping us? That is really what we're talking about when it comes to outcomes and you can't protect what you can't see. And so this is a great visual representation of um, our security operations team and where we actually see uh, indications of compromise and launch investigations across our customer base. And you can see how diverse uh, it actually is as far as what we see on average across a, a, a customer environment. It, it's really um, investigations that are triggered uh, from just about every area of infrastructure and IT uh, to, to really hone in on, uh, on what, what the risk actually is and, and what we need to do. So having open XDR capabilities, having broad visibility, it is really critical. And uh, at the, the end of the day, what companies should all be thinking of in its simplest form is, am I doing the best that I can to reduce the likelihood of an incident? And because one, this is how insurers are assessing your cyber risk. Um, two, this is how compliance driven industry begin to assess your cyber risk. And there's those two things I'll bring you back to that, that really impact or create an overall cyber risk profile. And that is, what is your likelihood of having an incident? And what is the impact of that incident? And if say your percentages are like the example here on the left, um, if you're able to implement security operations practices that mature your security posture over time on that journey that Lewis just described, and you're truly looking at everything in a broad visibility methodology, and you're doing so 24 by seven, you're drastically going to reduce that likelihood of an incident. In fact, uh, we like to tote that uh, we have such a, a grandiose impact here that we help customers reduce up to 90% of the overall impact that they could experience if they hadn't invested in a partnership and the approach um, to a full coverage model with security operations. Um, and, and we validated that um, statistically across our customers. And I think uh, going back to the overall impact, if you have a plan, and particularly I'm gonna reference incident response, there is no company in security that can guarantee you 100% protection. We don't claim to, um, and we encourage you if you're hearing that in the market to dig in further, why? Because nothing can truly stop everything and uh, cyber attackers uh, are, becoming more sophisticated and really the scales are not tipping in uh, in the industry's favor as far as how they're launching um, modern attacks, zero day threats, and you're not going to be able to keep up with all of them. What you can do is have a plan. And when you have a plan, and what I'm talking about here is a documented incident response plan that your organization has tested and followed, IBM says the average cost of a breach for those businesses that um, actually tested an incident response plan versus those who didn't have one at all uh, was a variance of over $4 million, right? If the average cost of a breach uh, is between four and $5 million overall from a, like a 
ransomware attack or a high impact incident, uh, and you can drill down that impact to less than a million dollars, that's a significant reduction uh, in the impact due to having a plan, practicing that plan, um, and, and also um, doing what you can to mitigate risk overall to, to reduce that likelihood. Um, and so if you, if you truly are investing in security operations, um, you are doing your business a favor by reducing um, the, the, the likelihood of an incident uh, and then working with a partner that actually helps you have a formalized plan uh, to, to reduce that, that overall impact. And I think one unique thing about Arctic Wolf and what we're bringing to market um, is we are so confident in our approach uh, and, and our partners in the insurance industry and um, what we are really doing there um, allow us to provide a warranty to our customers. And so if you think back to the, the four product offerings that, that Lewis highlighted um, on top of our platform and our delivery model, if you choose to bundle those solutions together, um, we back up our service with uh, a financial warranty um, that can provide you know, $500,000 to a million dollars in coverage to help with risk transfer. So if there's still going to be impact from an incident and you know, we at Arctic Wolf and you uh, are doing the best you can um, to mitigate risk and reduce that likelihood, then having that coverage for that potential impact is really important. It's important to the business uh, and it is really how business leaders and CEOs want to think about covering their risk. And any additional gap that's there, um, that is really why companies invest in cyber insurance overall. And I'm very confident um, if you engage in a follow-up conversation with Insight and our teams, we can really help you identify um, security challenges uh, or really assess and, and help you understand where there might be some friction in your organization around cost or if you're experiencing any pain points or trouble with the tools and approach you're using. Um, we would love to talk to you and we'd love to talk to you to highlight um, really the consolidation effort we can bring, but more than anything, um, how what we could implement versus what you're doing. So think current state progressing into a future state that actually does help you drive down cyber risk. That is our goal. Um, we want to understand what you're doing today in your approach for security operations and remind you that um, you don't have to invest in certain areas or have a certain foundation to start um, maturing your security operations right now. We want to help you overcome those unchallenge challenges and unlock that value immediately. And it can be as simple as um, really just going through a, a, a motion and talking, talking to our teams about uh, what that approach could look like in your organization. Um, and the, the best part about um, adopting security solutions that, that work is, again, I mentioned, we back our service with a warranty. Um, but beyond that, if, if you make the time to talk to us, we will put money uh, on the table to, to make sure you are getting value immediately from the conversation. Time is money. It's a finite resource. Um, and we want you to experience getting a lot of value out of follow-up conversation with us. Um, so by taking a meeting with Insight and Arctic Wolf, um, over the, the course of the next month, effectively, and we will be providing a uh, $100 Amazon gift card. Um, shout out to Amazon. We are a, a, a big partner with Amazon. That is what our platform is built on. Um, and we look forward to having conversations with, with everyone who attended today about how you could advance your security, achieve the value profile you're looking for, solve for your own effectiveness gap in security, uh, and, and really end cyber risk by investing in, in security operations. Um, I will open it up to Q&A now and look forward to answering uh, any questions that, that the audience might have in regards to the, the content that, that Lewis and I reviewed today. Yeah, Ben, I'm, I'm seeing a couple questions come in, but uh, if I can, if I can <laughs> uh, put myself to the, the front of the line there, I know you mentioned, I, I noticed you mentioned the uh, value of cyber insurance and the opportunity to invest in that. Uh, and I just want to make sure to share with the audience today that uh, through our partnership with the insure tech company, Cyurance, uh, we're making um, Cyurance, that is to say, is, is making available some, some really exciting exclusive discounts 
on policies to Arctic Wolf customers who are engaging with our, our several different security operations solutions. So, uh, you know, there's, there's no obligation there. Uh, security operations and effective implementation of security operations is gonna help a lot of businesses get a lot of uh, more effective uh, or more affordable policies from different vendors. But we also have some business relationships there that can, can really streamline the process of getting on board. No, that's a really good call out, Lewis. Um, risk mitigation, right? It doesn't stop at IT and IT investments. Um, and if you do not like the pressure you're getting from the insurance provider that you're leveraging, um, or you are falling victim to a heavy increase or um, being put under the, the gun under short notice that um, you don't meet the requirements to maintain the policy, um, we would love to help engage in uh, a way for you to get better coverage and the coverage you need uh, from one of our insurance partners that will likely provide a, a very heavy discount if you if you choose the operational approach with, with our um, all right, so we got a we got a couple questions here. I, I saw one. Uh, you know, I, I know this is uh, I think speaks to a slide of mine, but Ben, I'm I'm sure you have a lot of great insights here. Um, it was asking about the uh, the incident response solution, um, and I think oh. that that some of our materials inviting people to this webinar also mentioned this. Uh, can we talk a little bit more about the Arctic Wolf incident response solution? Yeah, absolutely. So um, incident response means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. So um, at Arctic Wolf, our our core solutions especially the ones around detection responding, we do incident response in an unlimited capacity as far as we can take it without engaging what I will call forensic investigation. Um, and this is the type of dynamic that is really, if you had a breach or you've been through the uh, unpleasant experience of, uh, of recovering or remediating from them, generally one of the people that get called is the insurance provider. The insurance provider is gonna recommend a forensic investigation company to, to put the case profile together. But you need people to get in, do the recovery work, do the forensic reporting, do the active response negotiation with bad actors, do the uh, communication with privacy attorneys and the insurance companies. That is what I'm talking about when I talk about Arctic Wolf's incident response team in particular. And we staff over 100 uh, incident response professionals. We do over a thousand cases a year. Um, and we have both a standalone retainer um, that is uh, very low cost comparative to the industry that connects you with those resources. And it can be, as I mentioned, implemented standalone, or we bundle in what we call our incident response jumpstart with our solutions to provide um, you know, a, a, a very low or no cost benefit to our customers if they're adopting Arctic Wolf security operations as, a, as an entirety, right, from a, a, a maturity of practice standpoint. And so um, our customers can really choose how they want to consume um, the incident response capabilities with, with Arctic Wolf, but um, they do, we do end-to-end -end recovery services, forensic IR, active response and negotiations, and we have an incredibly competitive offering in the market. Yeah, and I, I think a thing that I've heard that's um, uh, pretty exciting compared to some of the other offerings in the market is that that incident response jumpstart approach does include uh, some pre-planning activities for incident response, uh, and that's another place where the where the shift from um, from you know toward an operational mindset uh, can be really useful. I think I I appreciated Ben's candor earlier on when he's talking about nothing is a hundred percent right, and there are certainly uh, organizations out there that'll offer. Uh, an incident response retainer, and then companies that'll buy it with the thought of, well, I, I don't want to use this, uh, you know, I don't want to have to use this, so I'll just buy the retainer and then I'll, you know, sort of put it out of my mind. Um, but risk transfer uh, and and incident preparedness are not the same approach. When you're when you're working with an incident response firm, when you're putting a retainer in place, uh, you know, an important component of that is is planning effectively, uh, and that's one of the things that's going to be able to. Uh, deliver on the reduction in impact that, that Ben was highlighting in the uh, breach impact slide. Um, and that's something that, that we're, uh, we're committed to delivering. Yeah, um, I, see a, I see a question here, Lewis, that says, so incident response is remediation. Um, my answer to that is yes and no, right? Um, you can do, um, like, let's say Arctic Wolf managed detection response solution ticketed a customer, right, on something that needed to be done. Um, most 
remediation or resolution, I'll call it 99%, right, of tickets that, uh, that you would get from Arctic Wolf are, can be remediated through some standard function of IT, right? Call it um, you know, implementing a, a patch, resetting a password, uh, re-authenticating a user that may have had a compromised credential, um, things of that nature, right? Those are basic remediation functionality. Now, when there's an environment being locked up from ransomware or um, confirmed there's been money that disappeared, that's when you are actually going to call in a forensic investigator to do uh, you know, in-depth incident response, recovery, remediation, uh, and, and engage with, like I said, um, you know, usually the insurance company and, and, and privacy attorneys to help get you back to help. So there's a, there's a line that uh, it's really at customer discretion as far as when you say, okay, this has gone too far. We provide a lot of that advice to our customers if there's something outside the scope of, of what we provide in normal remediation functions uh, and, and, and in normal scope of services. But that is, that is where the line is generally drawn between um, you know, standard functions of IT remediation and recovery and overall incident response and, and forensic IR. Um, so we got a question here uh, from someone, you know, <laughs> you get a lot of questions with the, the detailed security stack, so I'll anonymize it a little to, to protect the innocent. Um, but, you know, they're saying they're interested in, in security operations, but uh, they're worried about the, the state of the current stack. There's a, a lot of legacy tools. Uh, they're still working to roll out MFA. Um, you know, would they be able to implement the kind of security operation solutions we uh, we were discussing in their current state, or are there some like necessary technical prerequisites that have to get stood up first? What are your thoughts on that one? Yeah, that's um, that's a good question. I think the uh, uniqueness of our approach and the benefit to customers is you do not have to have a particular tech stack or investments in particular brands of tools or certain types of tools in order to get the outcomes with us. The The, the beauty of our approach and buying into the Arctic Wolf platform and the services we provide is we work with whatever tooling or security investments our customers have already made. Um, that is a unique differentiator and it's an approach that helps us regardless of where our customer is in the journey, profile out and really tune and, uh, and customize the service in the first three months to align with where they are and help progress them uh, to where they want to be. And now that might surface recommendations over time, right? As you mentioned, the security posture in-depth reviews, uh, Lewis, it might surface things where you might wanna think about investing or where we're highlighting heavier areas of risk, um, but we generally don't recommend uh, particular tools and our approach and the way we can deploy our services works with uh, whatever investments you may already have. And so I think that is the approach that wins in the market because it doesn't silo you or you know pigeonhole you into a particular vendor or a particular um, locked approach it provides that flexibility that freedom to um, the customer to really um, decide what tools work best for them and best for their budget and best for their um, their company and the security operations approach just folds in over the top of yeah, um, you know this is this is maybe a, a bit of a a charged analogy, but I'll I'll give it a shot. You know the the approach of oh we'll we'll invest in or we'll make uh, the right security practice we'll put the right security practices in place once we've bought all the right tools for it sounds a little bit like uh, you know well I'm going to start working out once I've lost all this weight. <laughs> you know, and as a as a guy who's who's gone up and down in that myself, you know if you if you have a fitness goal you got you got to get out there. You know, you gotta you gotta start implementing it right away. A, a universe of security shelfware. You know, I, I'm gonna get out on the bike, but first I gotta buy the shorts and the gloves and the this and the that. And by by the way, I should move to a neighborhood with a better bike path, right? Like that's not uh, an approach that's um, that's effective or that's meaningful. And and uh, the security is not uh, gonna wait for you. Uh, attackers are not gonna wait for you to you know, take every piece of shelfware that you've acquired and decide whether you want to terminate it or install it or implement it or hire the full team on that. Um, it's, it's just really important to work with organizations that are meeting you where, you are at, where you're at. And, yeah. and every organization is, is in a place um, where 
there are some security practices that they are performing. Uh, and there are some security gaps that they can already identify. And that, you know, what's valuable is, is I think exactly as Ben said, um, being able to identify and prioritize those security gaps in the context of an actual conversation about security posture, rather than just sort of a, an endless universe. No, yeah, um, thank you for, for alluding more to that, Lewis. <laughs> no, my, my pleasure. Uh, we got a, a couple uh, questions, which I think you're going to be, I'm, I'm very glad we have you on to answer. Uh, first one here, um, can Arctic Wolf work with the SMB market? Uh, so, yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I have oversight of the kind of small, medium business and what we define as kind of commercial organizations here for Arctic Wolf. And I think um, the, the beauty of our service and our approach is we work with, you know, five employee law firms or hedge funds in New York, all the way up to, you know, 50,000 employee fortune companies. And so our service, our approach, our model, it's really built to service the entire market because these challenges are not unique to all size of business. Um, where you're at, again, in that journey or maturity depends on you know, what investments you already made and, and where you, where you wanna go. But from a cost model standpoint and the way we do uh, our service delivery, um, we've really built a scalable model that's predictable around a couple simple metrics to size. And that's you know, how many employees do you have? Um, how many servers do you have? And, and really how many firewalls or you know, how, many, uh, how many locations do you have? And if you can provide those details to Insight and to our, our sales team at Arctic Wolf, um, we, we can generally provide you a, a quote for the scope of services or the particular service product categories that, that align with, with your needs. And so um, we've, we've got a great fit for, for the whole market and we absolutely um, service the SMB market heavily. I think we have well over uh, 2,500 customers in the in the SMB kind of marketplace and space. Yeah, and I think that it's it's vital that uh, someone's out there doing the work. I think you know what what I've seen over the past couple of years at Arctic Wolf is a growing appreciation uh, in the SMB market space that you know you're not no one's no one's too small to get hacked, right? Maybe a maybe a decade ago uh, when we were seeing some of the first big you know Fortune Fortune 100 uh, headlines, there was this kind of general idea in smaller in the SMB space of like, well, you know, that that sounds like a like a big company problem. Um, and what we've seen since then is that's not the case. Um, but a lot of these uh, smaller organizations are, are not in a position where they're going to be building out a huge in house team and where they need to be able to uh, partner effectively. Yeah, um, we got also, another. Oh, yeah. I'll also call out Lewis before the next question here, right? Like I, I've talked to clients that are in uh, that, you know, they they pour asphalt or they build concrete, um, you know, pre prefabricated walls. I, I talked to a couple of companies, you talked to the CEO and they're like, you know, we don't have any data that anyone would want. Um, if you have a pulse and you have people on computers, you have data that, that people want. Or if you have computers, you have compute resources that people want in order to launch crypto mining or steal those resources. Or um, if you can't run your business because you're not connected to the internet any longer, um, you don't really have a business that's operating. And so um, yeah. it's a it's an interesting dynamic that sometimes when you talk to bu business leaders, particularly in SMB, uh, they feel like they're not at risk, or um, again, either they they feel their likelihood of having an incident or the impact from that incident doesn't outweigh the investment um, until. Um, you, you know, you could probably guess until something bad happens, and then, and then they realize how tr how true that impact actually financially was on the business. And and again, that's part of our duty and task is to help build those business case and help not only IT but really help you quantify the business leaders why it's important. So if you feel that risk, um, we'd love to we'd love to help. Yeah, I saw absolutely. a question around AI here, Lewis. Are, are we going to talk? I was AI? Uh, I was saving that one. Let's uh, let's go for it. What do uh, how is AI affecting cybersecurity? Um, look, I will tell you our approach and our vision and our uh, 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 our uh, uniqueness in the market is we have one of the biggest human-led security operations in the world right now. We have over six hundred security professionals uh, that operate in you know multiple. Um, U.S. SOC locations, but also have global presence um, to help help our our investments and 
uh, in global markets with, with their own security. And um, we are very much of the belief that AI is going to change the industry. And we are investing heavily there, particularly around learning models, around how uh, our investment in our data science team, we, we have a whole team, Arctic Wolf Labs, that really overlays with uh, value extraction out of the, the security telemetry that, that we're ingesting into our platform and how we connect the dots between what we're seeing across our customers to provide value and what we call the network effect. So if we see something in one customer, how do we expedite getting the answers and adjusting to look for those uh, across our entire customer base and really get ahead of um, the bad actors? That is one way is like building those learning models to be faster, faster with detections, faster and more efficient with what you're identifying and really identifying new threats before um, they even have a chance to rear their ugly head. Um, I think that will always be the horse race in security and staying ahead of that. And I'm, I'm happy to say that, that we are making significant investments there uh, as a business. Uh, philosophically though, and fundamentally, the human element of security is so critically important. Uh, and a lot of the investments and the methodology we use with how we talk and how we think about AI, it's to make our people more effective and efficient at delivering from a service orientation what our customers really want. And I highlighted that earlier. That is answers, ladies and gentlemen. They want to know answers quickly, promptly, uh, and intelligently. And they don't want to hear them from a robot or from an automated uh, source. Um, and there could be areas where that fits in the future, um, but it's not on overall service value. It's not on overall posture advancement. Um, we, we truly believe that our consultative methodology is, is winning the market right now as far as um, how we are joining our investments in AI uh, with the extraordinary talent of our people uh, to provide that value to our customers. Yeah, and you know, and I think that that's a, I, a, I really believe in that approach as an Arctic Wolf employee, but B, I think it's backed up by research in a really interesting way. Um, and usually when you see, you know, the, a new headline about a new uh, machine learning um, technology that's hit some exciting new benchmark, you know, there's a there's a big paper uh, and, oh, it's this new model. It's got a, you know, a, a trillion parameters and it does this new task at, at some high percentage fidelity. We're very excited about it. Uh, and then the little footnote, and they're there, by the way, in the research program, if you go looking for them, the little footnote is that the, what, what <laughs> the researchers call them the centaur team. The, the little footnote is that human plus the AI system consistently beating the AI system in performance, consistently beating it. And they'll they'll roll out a new system that, oh, it's at a near human benchmark, it's passing the human benchmark. Um, that's exciting for a research team. Ben's taught exactly right. What you need in security is you need outcomes, you need answers. You need uh, those answers and those outcomes delivered at the highest possible performance. And even in the world of cutting edge AI research, we're seeing that it's combining the humans and these new technologies together that's delivering that optimal performance. Uh, another thing that I'm really proud of at Arctic Wolf is we're committed to doing security the right way. Uh, and I've been at the company for a number of years and I've seen us make a, a bunch of decisions that are, that are organized around that commitment. And I think that uh, you know, the, the vision, the evolving vision of the, the growing role of AI um, that is continuing to enhance rather than supplant uh, the human expertise that we bring to the table is, is another example uh, of us making the decisions, uh, business decisions that are going to optimize security for our customers. We got a, a couple more in just a, a few minutes. Um, I got one here about uh, our, our partnership model, um, how, we, how we sell. Uh, ben, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So, so Arctic Wolf does 100% uh, of our business through our partner community and, and Insight is one of our uh, largest partners. Um, we love working with them. They unlock a lot of value for our customers beyond what our core services provide. And as I, as I mentioned earlier, as you were working through advancing posture with clients, uh, sometimes it comes up that maybe it is warranted to upgrade a tool or to advance a tool or to invest in, in another particular area. Um, that is always up to the customer a choice and is, is your own kind of risk versus reward kind of assessment that you have to take. But we don't sell anything else outside of what we provide. And so, um, you know, having a, a trusted uh, vendor relationship with someone who can, 
you know, here identify and help kind of close those gaps is a, is a big, big value position. And, and really uh, partners like Insight can help bring that consolidation effort uh, really to bear very fruitfully for, for customers to, to unify spend, but also advance, uh, it, advance really the, the maturity of your security operations. So, um, so, so that is the, the approach we, we really take on, on how we partner, partner in the market. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, Ben's, uh, from our sales org, so that's a, a sales first thought. And I'll just say, I'm really glad that we take that approach because it lets, uh, partners like insight convene groups like this. Um, there are a bunch of folks listening to this webinar. I'm very glad that we've had the opportunity to share the insight. Uh, if it weren't for an organization like, uh, or the, the insight, sorry, uh, share our thoughts. If it weren't for an organization like Insight, I'd be trying to give this presentation, you know, uh, down at the street corner, and I doubt they would be quite as uh, quite as engaged. If you haven't seen Lewis flip signs, you should check it out. Norm. You should I, check it out, man. They uh, right to left, left to right, top to bottom, any any direction you want. Uh, let's see. We probably have time uh, for one more, Lewis, uh, and then we will. Yeah. I think uh, we got an early one that I that I dropped that uh, asked to talk a little bit about the difference between our various uh, solutions that were identified on, I think, slide 11. So I'll just uh, re-push that. And uh, Ben, if you want to talk about uh, a little bit more in depth um, to equip those conversations about the uh, couple different solutions we offer. Sure. No, th thanks, Lewis. So um, at Arctic Wolf, when we invest in launching a, a solution to our customers, it, it, it really is in the lens of what, what actually solves a, a pretty heavy lift for our customers if they were to go and try to do this on their own. Um, and in one of the heaviest lifts in security operations is around building an effective SOC monitoring capabilities or investment in that 24 by seven coverage. And so that is what managed detection and response is. It's really about doing a fully managed and hosted SIM. It's about doing regular external and dark web scanning. It's about um, having an actual documented auditable ticket trail on what you're seeing, what you're investigating, what you're remediating, uh, and, and actually having that all together in one place. And it's about um, proactively continuing to advance based on the risks that you're seeing and ticketing on and assessing. So that's what managed detection and response is. Um, managed risk um, is vulnerability management in its simplest form. It is internal scanning, external scanning, uh, understanding risks in your environment and prioritizing them, uh, accepting the risk, assessing the risk, and, and really uh, trying to tackle the highest risks in your environment, um, you know, consistently. Um, training and awareness is really about education. It's about building a culture of security with your employees and really keeping them consistently up to speed on what types of attacks are happening. Um, you know, one story I love is when um, this recent run on Silicon Valley Bank happened, and we had content pushed out within a several days of sophisticated phishing attacks and spear phishing attempts that we were already seeing in the market around so many banks and particular tech companies changing their operating bank or moving money around in the market. Um, when there's chaos, that's an opportunity for bad actors. And, you know, we had content launched to employees that we manage the content, curated it, and distributed it um, to our, our customer base who are leveraging this service uh, very, very quickly. And then I did touch earlier about incident response. Um, this is uh, the actual forensic IR capabilities and the ability to uh, effectively bring in the SWAT team, right, to recover, work with, uh, uh, do the forensic investigation, handle active, um, active, uh, threat negotiations and, and, and actually work with your insurance carrier. So um, those are our four, four uh, solutions. And as we continue to uh, advance in security operations, uh, you can imagine that other categories will emerge as far as where we feel we can really help provide value to our customers. Um, but it always is delivered in an outcome-based approach that is very service oriented um, and, you know, we saw that last question pop in there. Uh, these uh, solutions are going to um, apply across the NIST five functions. Uh, so identify, protect, detect, respond, recover. Uh, we're, we're excited to offer capabilities that speak to each of those. Um, and I think with that, uh, 
thank you. It's been a, a pleasure speaking to you today. Thanks uh, very much, Ben, for, for coming on and sharing uh, your insights. Oh, I appreciate thank you, Ben it. and Lewis. Thank you, Ben thank and Lewis. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. If you'd like to review the presentation, please check out our on-demand page for more. Don't forget to take the time and answer the survey questions provided. Thank you for attending and have a great day. Thank you all.